What is going on everyone and welcome to my buyer's guide of the Elder Scrolls Online. So with the upcoming expansion of the Dark Brotherhood, I wanted to give you guys an idea of what to get in order for DLC. Now, whether you're a new player or a returning player who has just kind of quit midway and never bought any of the expansion, or just like anyone in general, um, I'll give you an idea of what everything is without spoilers, of course, and just let you guys know what came out in what order and what you should do, in other words. What caters to your play style, essentially. So, a little bit about me before I start. I've been playing since the closed beta, off and on, for about two years. And I pretty much tested everything, have everything on the channel, so if you just want to watch it, uh, you can see something on the screen and you just click that and it'll lead you to a playlist. So, with that said, um, the first expansion that came out was the Imperial City. Now, this one is PvP only. Uh, occasionally, it has a few quests, but they're not really connected to anything, so uh, it's not really that important. Um, the price tag for the Imperial City expansion is $20, but keep in mind you can get all the expansions for the ESO Plus subscription, which is like $15 a month, but if you just want like one permanent purchase, then I guess pick which one never, I don't care. And then, so essentially, Imperial City was a new area inside of Cyrodiil. And if you're more like a PvP player, then that area contains a new, like, circle-ish zone, which you might be seeing right now on the screen. And then there's, like, the three factions, which is, like, think of a triangle. All three factions are in a different area, and... You're pretty much just fighting for control. So there are bosses and occasional ads from the bosses that are just like wandering. Um, there's a new currency. It's called Telvar Stones. And you use that to buy new materials for better in rank 16 stuff. Or you can just buy more PvP focused stuff like teleport stones and whatnot. So if you're only here for PvP, uh, Imperial City is definitely the one to go for. It's pretty unique. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are still doing that right now, but um, just in my experience, if you are playing this on PC, um, the Ebonheart and the Dominion are usually a little bit better than the Daggerfall faction, but that could just be what I noticed, and it could change regularly. So overall, Imperial City, $20, and it's very... Uh, PvP focused, occasional quests, but it doesn't really lead to anything. It's just like, oh, do this. Okay, that's it. So the next expansion that came out after that was the Orsinium one. Now this one is 3,000 crowns or $25. It's slightly more expensive simply because it's uh, PvE. And you get an entire new zone, like what you would be doing in the base game content, uh, it's called Rothgar. Now, if you've played any other Elder Scrolls games, you know what Orsinium is. It's an orc-themed uh, zone, and it's really unique. I actually enjoyed this one the most out of all three expansions, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But overall, if you go into the new area, you just kind of wander around like you would do normally. There are quests on the main road, delves, caves, and all that stuff, dungeons, and then... You find those and then just keep doing what you want. The story was actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's just orc themed. And there are occasionally uh, quest decisions where you would think you have to make some tough decisions on whether your opinion versus like stuff that happened. So very critical thinking. or That didn't make sense. A lot of critical thinking involved in it. But overall... Um, even if you're a new player, starting at level 1, you could play it. In fact, you can actually play all of them at level 1. It scales to veteran rank 16, and I'm not going to say it's easier doing it at level 1, because if you are a veteran player, you'll have some champion points at least, and that will help you out. But they definitely scaled everything, so level 1 can do it. And the enemies you'll see in there, it'll say veteran 16, but don't worry, it scales. I've personally tested it myself and you can definitely do it so overall that was a good one a lot of content i say you'll get about maybe 20 hours out of it 
they also added uh, a new raid or what do they call the huge dungeons for groups. But they added a Maelstrom Arena. And this one is actually a solo themed one where it's essentially a wave defense. And then, of course, after you fight the wave, you fight a boss. <laughs> and they also have a veteran and normal one. So definitely a cool one. So next on our list, and the final expansion or the most recent one, um, is the Thieves Guild. Once again, another one if you've played the ESO games or just Elder Scrolls and games in general, um, you'll know about the Thieves Guild. Sneaking, thievery. Uh, you actually get a new um, skill line or skill tree in this one that's connected to your character. So more like sneaking and thieving or thievery, is that the word, related to it. And yeah, it's another PvE-focused one. Now this one's a little different from Orsinium simply because... With a new skill tree introduced, uh, you know how you have to level up all your skills and then you just go from there. Uh, the way this one works in terms of questing is every level you get for the Thieves Guild line, you get one or two new quests. And then after that, uh, it just keeps on going until like level, I think, 13. That's the cap. So... Level 9 is when you complete the story for the Thieves Guild, but then you can keep going. They introduced Heists, which is um, like a timed dungeon. And if you do it, you get like higher rewards. It's repeatable. You do them every day or something. And it's 2,000 crowns, so that's like $20. It's slightly cheaper than Orsinium, but it's also a bit shorter. Um, I personally completed it in an, about 15 hours, but that's just because I kind of got lost and didn't know what to do occasionally as well. But, um, overall, this one I didn't really like as much just because of how it was made. Uh, I enjoyed the story. It was really good. I enjoyed the characters for it, but just getting one or two quests every certain number of levels was kind of grindy in a way it's like a forced side quest thing which i believe no game should actually force a player to do side missions uh if the side missions were actually good people would do it but if they're not people skip it for reasons and this is one of those things where i felt like it was forced and it actually is you actually have to grind repetitive quests over and over just to get to the next level, to get to the next main story. Um, I make it seem like it's really bad, but it's just like you have to grind a few hours every now and then from like the later stages of the quest. But if you really enjoy the game, it's probably like not even a big deal. But I just personally didn't like doing it just because I was recording and or live streaming it. So it kind of, I felt like I was wasting time essentially. But Overall, the story, once you actually get to it, it's pretty good. They added a new raid, and it's called the Maw of Lockage. And it's essentially like the group event, and you go in, fight the boss, get uniques. So with that said, um, the order they, of the expansions that, that came out was Imperial City first, Orsinium, and then Thieves Guild, and then the upcoming uh, Dark Brotherhood at the end of May or mid-June if you're a console player. And yeah, so you don't have to do them in any specific order. I just wanted to give you a little idea of what each of the expansions was. And in my opinion, I thought Orsinium was the best. And then I like the Thieves Guild. I just didn't like the grindy part of it. And then I'm not really a huge fan of Imperial City, but I did play it. So that was interesting. So, would I recommend playing this if you haven't completed the story? Uh, it doesn't actually matter. Like, the thing scales, or the new zone scales to whatever you're at. So, it's not a big deal. But, I would probably recommend waiting until at least you're Veteran 1, or you have at least level 50 of your crafting, blacksmithing, and whatnot. Simply because the stuff you find inside of the area, it also scales so like 
let's say you're mining oh wait what is it like blacksmithing the thingy where you find ores and stuff um if yours is level one compared to someone else's who's level 50 or maxed out then they're gonna be finding higher tier items while you're finding beginner tier items which kind of makes sense but the higher tier items are actually kind of harder to find so if you uh, just actually have a higher level of skill, then you probably want to just go there eventually. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed it. All of them can be played, and I do hope to bring you some Dark Brotherhood gameplay when it comes out. The PTS is actually available now. PTS is public test server, so that means you kind of you play it, but it's in beta. Nothing also carries over, so I just can't be bothered. I'd rather wait for the full thing to come out and give you an accurate assessment later on so with that said i hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to drop a like on the video if you didn't give it a dislike and let me know how i can improve in the future and with that said if you would like to watch any of the expansions that i've done uh you could either click the annotation on the screen or like there'll be a picture you can just click and it'll take you to a playlist or check the link in the description if you're on mobile and you can't do that it, everything will just be organized just check the link in the description to whichever one interests you and yeah if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comments my social media is also there so twitter facebook everything else so have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys with more gameplay later